Hello everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy 13 walkthrough. Uh, we are just starting out here. I'm going to take a look at the the shops and I just show you guys kind of what's, what's available at the moment. Generally, when you pick up an item, uh, it should be, uh, with some exceptions, available then to purchase uh, on these, uh, what do you call these, like online stores. Uh, this rune bracelet, however... I think I'm quite a ways past this, and I don't think I've got one of those yet. So, again, there are some exceptions. Uh, but generally, when you obtain an item, like, in the field, it uh, becomes available for purchase in the in the stores. Um, I, I suppose, though, that being said, uh, I, I think it's... I think these, these shop lists are basically specifically uh, in tune to where you're at in the story. Uh, meaning, it's not necessarily whether you've actually obtained an item or not. It's just your your current progress in the story is what's going to determine these lists. I uh, hear this pulse work soldier. I tried to get a preemptive, but it looked like uh, it looked like he he basically when he, he comes comes out at you, he just walks backwards then so that you can't get uh, you know a preemptive then from behind unfortunately. But that's okay. Uh, but here you'll see I'm, I'm generally starting out in the, oh gosh, no, I'm not going to remember the paradigm name. Anyways, it's uh, Hope is a Ravager, Saz is a Ravager, and Vanille is a Saboteur. And uh, then I will normally switch to Try Disaster after I've got uh, D-Shell and D-Protect on these Pulsework Soldiers. And here, up here, we've got a new type of en enemy. These two, I believe, are Incubus. And then there is a, a Succubus coming up as well. So that'll be another new enemy. That'll be in a, a battle or two coming up. Uh, the Incubus are no nothing really to worry about, I suppose. Uh, once we f do run into the Succubus, though, things will change a little bit and... Uh, Pri your your uh, target priority may change just a little bit, uh, but we'll see once we actually run into one of those. <clears throat> uh, so for the time being, I think all of my characters are generally uh, magic, or the, the stat that they're using is their magic stat. Yeah, it looks like everybody's pretty much casting, and uh, the saboteur role is, uh, I believe all of their abilities are, are all based off of the magic stat, so even like D-Protect and D-Shell will do a little bit of magic damage. So not only does it, you know, inflict those statuses, but it'll also do a little bit of magic damage as well, like I said. So, uh, you know, I guess just keep that in mind, uh, you know, when you're, when you're making your equipment choices. Isn't that a... A warship from Pulse. You mean they made it this far? No, of course not. Not during the war, and not since. They might have tried, but none of their forces made it into Cocoon. They only damaged the Outer Rim. Then, the Sanctum's Foul Sea pushed them back. What, you, uh, sleep through history? <laughs> More or less. So, what's a ship from Pulse doing here? Once the war was over, people couldn't live near the Rim anymore. In places like the Hanging Edge. So the Foul Sea... They gathered up scrap from Pulse, and used it for rebuilding here. This is what was left. A bunch of garbage. Who'd have thunk? A Pulse file C and who knows what mixed in with all the trash. Who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? All right, let's move on. Smart bomb. That's the uh, paradigm I was trying to think of. Uh, very, very useful for this area. Um, I think, I think in the the first time I played the game, I definitely, I, I feel like the most, or when I, when I had problems, it was more because I didn't know what paradigm to use when. And, uh, and really kind of what the rules specifically did, actually. Um, so, 
you know, like we were saying in uh, one of the other, or probably the last video, the saboteur functions a lot like the commando in that it will it will reduce the the chain gauge's uh, reduction. I suppose does that make sense? Yeah. Maybe there's a there's probably a better way to put that. Uh, it reduces the rate at which the uh, stagger gauge depletes. How about that? That sounds good. Um, so that's that's kind of their their deal. And again, now right now it's it's perfect to have Vanille uh, in that saboteur role because again, no, right now we don't actually have a commando, unfortunately. So um, eventually, Saz will get uh, the commando role, and that's not that's not too much farther on. But uh, uh, you know, for the time being. Uh, we kind of need we kind of need that uh, chain gauge uh, reduction or chain gauge depletion reduction. <laughs> oh, that sounds so funny. Uh, but we need to do that right now. So again, uh, you know, it's a it's a really good role to keep her in for the time being. And then uh, once you've got you know a, a couple of good debuffs off, then you can swap over to your try uh, try disaster. And I uh, definitely would recommend doing that too. So uh, that and that brings up. Uh, you know another aspect of chaining, and that's the that's the Ravager. Uh, the Ravager role is, I think, the best at raising the chain gauge percentage. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, the commandos will gradually, in ever so slightly, raise your your stagger gauge, uh, as well as you know the other roles like saboteur and whatnot, or some of the other roles I should say. Medics cannot do that at all. Neither can synergists, uh, but that's that is that is because they don't they don't really interact with the enemies. But um, so ravager, I would say you know definitely the best at raising that that stagger meter percentage, and uh, you know again that's going to be that's going to be key in uh, in really dealing damage in this game and your success. Uh, you know, in, in battle in general. Now, uh, that being said, though, there's there are going to be some fights, and this will be much, much later, so this this really probably won't be relevant for the time being, but there are some fights much later on where uh, the, the stagger meter can get really, really high, and you kind of want to keep it there. And so generally, in those cases, what you'll want to do is build up the stagger meter uh, really well, and then actually reduce the amount of... Ravagers that you have and and kind of have them transition into commandos instead so you know obviously it's gonna you're gonna need more paradigms to do that um, there is a there's one uh, paradigm I know specifically if I remember right it's the Cerberus uh, paradigm and that's all three commandos and uh, that's really a great one for again once you've got your uh, stagger gauge extremely high and you want to keep it there um, so you know, the, and, and there's there's some more uh, intricacies to to commando damage and their their bonuses and whatnot that we'll probably get into a little bit later. But uh, suffice to say, for the time being, you're generally gonna want to have somebody like you know either one commando or one saboteur and probably two uh, ravagers if possible. You know now. It won't be too much longer, and we won't uh, have all three characters. You know, unfortunately. Uh, at the beginning of the game, they like to do that a lot. They'll they'll split you up, and you know, at times you'll only have one character, and other times you'll only have two. So, you kind of have to just get used to uh, you know the way the way that works, I guess. And uh, that's not so bad though either. I feel like it kind of it kind of trains you a little bit on how you know the stagger gauge works and how uh, I guess the game mechanics really work. Uh, but anyways, okay, so uh, I don't know if this is our first Succubus fight here. It might be. Yeah, but, uh, alright, so if there is only one, now, uh, again, um, you know, this this might change depending on your character's uh, development, but as of right now, I felt like uh, when there's only one Succubus, it's not a bad idea to take it down first. Uh, it can cast... Uh, Unfortunately, it can cast some debuffs on your characters, like Deprotect. And uh, that can be a bit nasty in, in uh, conjunction with, like, these Incubus here that, uh, that can deal, you know, some decent damage. So, uh, that being said, you know, again, with, with just one of them on the field, I would say take it down first. 
Now, I think that changes a little bit farther on here when we run into, I, I believe there's a battle with, uh, I think, two of each. And I think at that point I end up taking down the Incubus first. Um, just because, to be honest, they're the they're the real damage dealers, and uh, you know, once the damage is all gone, then uh, I don't worry so much about the debuffs. But we'll see again how that all plays out here in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Pulsework soldiers. Anytime you anytime you've got a Pulsework soldier in the mix here, I would say take that out last. You know, being that it's just so hard to get them them staggered uh, it's great once you do get them staggered because then they don't do anything but uh, I feel like for the time being it's not a bad idea to uh, to wait you know until until you've got everything else killed to to take them down uh, so this particular fight we did the succubus first then incubus and the Neil eats dirt so I think I end up retrying this yep all right so we're gonna redo this so that's the danger too of uh, of deep protect there. It uh, makes your characters unfortunately extremely vulnerable to to attacks, which you know is exactly what it should do. But. All right, so uh, this turn there, this worked out okay, I suppose. So we've got actually a, a preemptive strike here. So uh, with that being said, I decided instead to go for the pulsework soldier first uh, because again, now there you know very difficult to stagger and you know if you've got basically an, an automatic stagger right off the bat there uh, you know I'd focus on, on him instead first and so with that being said now that we've got him down I decided to focus on the incubus uh, instead and once again uh, reason really being here is because it already got a deep protect off on hope so, uh, you know, trying to avoid debuffs was not really a, a, an option anymore. So at that point, I just wanted to get the, the damage sources down instead. And so now, obviously, we're going to take him down last. So that's, that's kind of, you know, an interesting uh, decision. or That's my decision-making process when it comes to, uh, you know, preemptive strikes, I suppose. You know, a lot of times uh, when you do get a preemptive, if you've got, if you're facing an enemy that's got a really high stagger threshold, it's, you know, it's, a, it's usually a really good idea to, to then instead take them down first, as opposed to, you know, what you'd probably take them down last. So, you know, again, uh, decisions up to you, but uh, being that, uh, you know, again, those pulse work, uh, soldiers are so difficult to uh, to stagger. And here, I don't know, I thought that, I thought that was going to turn out to be a preemptive, but uh, I don't know if one of these things, or I don't know if you just can't get a preemptive on these guys without a, you know, without a Deceptisol or whatever, but I thought I interacted with with them when they were both turned around, but I guess not. Oh well. Not the end of the world. Uh, so there you go, I got, uh, got the debuffs on. And uh, decided to go with the Tri Disaster to really bring up that chain gauge. And good night. And we'll switch. I think I switched back here. No, here we go. Now I switch back. All right. And then we're back to try disaster. I see here. Wow, this has gotten really low. That was kind of lucky. So you'll notice I do that quite a bit too in this. Uh, to be honest, now just the the fact that you can retry these battles, I tend to get you know much more risky than if I was playing, you know, maybe another game. I just uh, I don't. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really play it safe. Uh, and you know whether or not that's a good thing, I don't know. But uh, uh, to tell you the truth, it's kind of refreshing <laughs> hey welcome to the party you miss us huh would it kill her to smile time to move Okay, so uh, lightning's back, which means we've got our commando back. 
So now uh, we're back to, I've got obviously the, the Relentless Assault is uh, set up automatically there. Um, I actually like to move diversity up to the second option just because normally in battle if I have to switch out of uh, if I have to switch out of relentless it's normally because I need to heal so then you know I want to have quicker access I suppose to diversity instead so that's kind of why I did that now um, gosh to be honest though it may not have been a uh, may not have been a horrible idea to uh, to actually go back to was it smart I think it's smart bomb so having the, I could have done that with vanille being saboteur and the other two being ravagers and that actually may might not have been a horrible idea and then uh, you know either either set up a, a try disaster again you know much like we, we had set up there um, and then you know, I don't know, at, at a certain point, I guess you could do them like this, but, I mean, I don't know, T to be honest, that was working out really well, so, so here the, the problem, or, I shouldn't say the problem, the, uh, the difference, uh, between going with, you know, the commando, or sorry, uh, relentless versus smart bomb would be, um, your chain gauge should go up a little bit slower once the enemy has been completely debuffed because uh, when the when the AI is using the saboteur role they'll they'll usually stop uh, for whatever reason once you've got an enemy fully debuffed so um, you know and that's the problem with having a, a saboteur as a, or being controlled by the AI Just as I was getting used to uh, if you're playing the the saboteur yourself that's not that's not an option or that's not an issue because as long as you are hitting auto hinder it'll it'll keep trying to use uh, you know status effects and thus dealing damage as well as maintaining the chain so uh, you know I guess keep that in mind too that's some pretty I wouldn't say expert advice, but uh, I guess you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, so I don't know. E either way, you can you can do what you want here. It seems to me that Relentless is working out okay. Uh, smart bomb, though. Gosh, that was that was actually extremely effective there. <laughs> Uh, so here we've got the same same battle as earlier actually here. It's a, a succubus and two incubus. Definitely say, wow, man, this... And may maybe it's because lightning is just uh, equipped really well, but these actually... They do seem to be going down incredibly fast. Seconds. Nice. We're almost having the uh, target time for some of these battles. Here we go. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Okay, Sans. All right, so I've wow, I'm almost up to 13 hours on this playthrough already. So again, now that's that's because I spent so much time in the Pulse Vestige uh, farming Deceptisol and is it Forceol? I think it's Forceol. But uh, I'd say time well spent. All right, so this this battle, uh, I did a little bit of a a little bit of a change once again now we've got two obviously two succubus and I was not too worried about them just because again now we've got uh, you know only one incubus dealing the real damage so I figured you know what let's take down the incubus first eliminate that damage source and he can debuff me all he wants or they can debuff me sorry all they want and it's not really gonna matter Alright, what do we have in here? Ooh, a Libra scope. Alright. 
So Libriscope, uh, I think I mentioned it in one of the other videos though, uh, the, the Libriscope is actually pretty, pretty useful uh, when you don't want to use TP to identify an enemy's weakness. Now, you know, again, the AI itself will kind of root out all the different weaknesses as you go, uh, you know, and that's, I mean, to be honest, it's only really useful when you're uh, encountering an enemy for the first time or... Or, uh, yeah, I suppose haven't defeated one yet. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, like, the first time you defeat one, if it unlocks all the information or not. I don't know. Or if your characters still have to kind of, you know, try the different uh, attacks on them to, to uh, actually test out the weaknesses or not. But um, I guess, again, the, the good thing is about a Libra Scope is that it, it doesn't take TP, which, you know, right now, I don't think any characters actually have have that maybe I'm wrong I guess I'm I don't remember who gets it first and and when that is but maybe it is I don't know maybe we'll see here if I can if I'm Time quick enough serious. oh no I think you have to go into abilities or something like that or no not abilities, not abilities. Let's see here. Uh, yeah okay I do have techniques yeah Libra must be open, so I probably have already discussed that into the ground. Uh, but anyways, as far as this fight goes, uh, same deal. You know, nothing really, nothing really that much different with this one. It looks like I'm gonna need to do a little bit more though, just because yeah, Saz is getting a little bit too low for me to to stay to or to feel comfortable. Alright, uh, yeah, looks like we got them all debuffed, and then switched right back to Relentless to finish, finish them off. So yeah, your call, you know, on whether or not you like to, you know, debuff and then switch to Try Disaster, or debuff and then go to Relentless, or just stay in Relentless, you know, the whole time, that would, that works too. Your call. Ember Ring. Uh, so on the Ember Ring there, that is going to reduce fire damage, I believe, by 20%. Yeah, 20%. Um, for the most part, I won't be equipping accessories like that um, for for the foreseeable future. Uh, usually those, those are so specific, you know, and like, yes, they are useful at certain points in the game, but for the most part... Uh, the, the, those useless are few and far between, so I generally aren't, uh, I will not equip those items. Uh, you know, again, I, I feel like uh, I'll, I'll try to point out when those I feel are needed. What is that? Pulse armament. And that's bad for us. Isn't it? You have eyes, don't you? Hold it together. All right, so this is the first uh, dreadnought in the game, and man, so uh, I played this game, you know, when it first came out, however many years ago it was, and then I played Final Fantasy XIV afterwards. And so uh, Final Fantasy XIV has a lot of these dreadnoughts uh, running around, and uh, so every time I played XIV, I was like, oh my god, that reminds me of XIII so much, and XIII was such a good game. And now that I've uh, quit playing Final Fantasy XIV and I'm back to this, or doing a walkthrough for this, I'm like, oh my god, Final Fantasy XIV was so good, you know, so it's kind of funny, but... Uh, uh, anyways, as far as tactics here, definitely get this guy debuffed. Unfortunately, he is going to use Steam Clean, which is what he just did right now, to uh, to remove one of those debuffs, but that's not that big of a deal. You can stick it right back on him if you want. Uh, I'm not sure. What are we in here? Uh, smart Bomb. Uh, oh, yeah. So, all right. I got that back on him. And, uh... Other, I mean, he's going to go down pretty quickly. This is his first incarnation, I guess. 
and uh, we will be fighting him one more time. You know, the other thing is so... I, oh, it looks like I got... I used buffs too, okay? So we've got everybody with, uh, with faith, which is not a, not a bad idea. Uh, it looks like lightning did have bravery, though. again uh but yeah so uh in the previous one there okay so this is bully okay so bully is what i'm using i think that saboteur uh is like yeah lightning must be um ravager and then vanille is uh synergist no sorry um vanille saboteur saz synergist there you go now, the, the crummy thing about that was, you know, like I said before, once the AI, or once a, a, one of your uh, followers, I suppose you could say, has casted all their debuffs or landed all their debuffs, then they just stand there and don't do anything, which is kind of weird. I don't really know why, why they do that, but um, for the time being, anyway, that's how their AI is behaving. I don't know if that changes later on in the game, maybe with uh, more... Uh, our access to more debuffs. I'm not really sure, but uh, as of right now, it's kind of lame. So uh, that being said, you may you may want to have a different uh, paradigm setup too. So maybe something like uh, uh, synergist with Saz, and then I don't know, like Commando Ravager, or yeah, that's probably not a bad one because uh, that way you can still buff while uh, you know maintaining the chain gauge as well as still raising it. So I don't know. Uh, that's that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a horrible one. Now uh, we're gonna keep keep the same strategy up. Try to keep both debuffs on him, uh, just so that Lightning can still do you know decent damage with her commando roll. Obviously she's got bravery and faith. It's kind of redundant because well I mean she really only needs probably bravery because I'm sticking to the to the commando but all right anyways so target time was 535 and duration was 314 and we still only got a four star what what is up with that all right anyways got some some key items there and uh Pulse unlock some rolls like that isn't it got me not even the core has access to intel on pulse soldiers in the field fight blind yeah i noticed that but don't you need to know exactly what you're up against? Target's a target. You like to keep it simple, don't you? I stick to my goal. As long as you have a goal, you can fight? You can stay alive. All right, so what did we get there? I think we got a new shop, and then we've got the uh, the upgrade kit or whatever it is. So now we can finally upgrade our items. Uh, I am going to hold off. I don't really feel like right now is that great of a time to upgrade. You could if you really wanted to. But uh, just with the way that the, uh, the upgrade system all works, uh, it's not that great of a time to upgrade. So basically how it all works is that uh, Actually, you know what I should really save this discussion for at least the next video because we are really getting close to the end here So I think I will I think I'll just hold off on that until the next video But uh, I guess again, I would say I would just hang on to your uh, your your uh, stuff your uh, upgrade items, sorry and, uh, and hold off until a little bit later, uh, once it's uh, more effective or it makes more sense, I suppose, to to upgrade. But if you absolutely must uh, do it right now, you you definitely can. Uh, I just I feel like it's a little little bit wasteful. So, uh, anyways, I'm gonna cut the commentary here. So like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Hope these guides are helpful though, and uh, hope you join me for more. All right, thanks for watching. Hit.